Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Dominique Bethia, and I am the Outreach Manager at Share Cancer Support. Our first panelist is Dr. Carol Brown. She is a board certified gynecologic oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering. She is a senior vice president, chief health equity officer, and the incumbent of the Nichols Beyond the Chair for Health Equity. Without further ado, I will leave you in the hands of Dr. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Brown. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much, um, Dominique, for having me. Thank you, Cher. Uh, really look at, looking forward to speaking with you all this evening. I'm really honored to be on the program with Nefertari Moore. Uh, and just something that wasn't in my bio, I've been involved with Cher for, I think, about 25 years. I was on the board for many years. Uh, and so Cher holds a very um, important place in my career and my heart. So I'm going to talk to you tonight about endometrial cancer in women of color. Next slide, please. So uh, first, I want to focus on um, what is endometrial cancer. So endometrial cancer is the number one cancer in the United States, the number one GYN cancer in the United States of America today in terms of the number of cases. So um, there will be over I think 45,000 cases of endometrial cancer in 2021. And we expect, unfortunately, in 2022, there'll probably be over 50,000 cases diagnosed. The leading symptom of endometrial cancer is abnormal bleeding. And we'll get into this a little bit more. It's not just postmenopausal bleeding, it's abnormal bleeding. It could be a heavy period, spotting, a lot of things, but really important takeaway is abnormal bleeding is a major symptom. And it is also the number one reason that women over 40 have an endometrial biopsy or a DNC, meaning that's why they're having that procedure is to make sure they don't have endometrial cancer. So you can see here in this slide, the uh, uterus is made up of two parts. One is the muscle in pink and then the lining. And what you see pictured here is an cancer, endometrial cancer, it's cancer of the lining of the uterus. Next slide, please. So what are the signs and symptoms of endometrial cancer and how can we screen for it? Well, the most important um, thing about screening and diagnosis is that if you have abnormal bleeding, as long as you're over 35 or over 40, you need to really strongly consider getting a biopsy done, all right? So as I said earlier, bleeding is the number one symptom that leads to diagnosis, postmenopausal bleeding. So after you've stopped getting your periods, if you have bleeding, then that needs to be investigated. And this is something that all OBGYNs are really taught you know, and it's very commonly known. And most women are aware of this too, that if they start bleeding after they stop having their periods, they usually bring it to the attention of their physician or healthcare provider. But it's the other categories of bleeding in women who are still menstruating. And the fact that this cancer is now happening at much younger ages that really cause part of the problem for women of color. And that is that you can have abnormal bleeding. So perimenopausal intermenstrual bleeding. So that means you're in your mid forties, early fifties, you're still getting your period, but it kind of comes and goes. And so you may have a heavy flow one time, it may skip a cycle and then bleed in between. And very often your healthcare provider will say, oh, you're perimenopausal and kind of dismiss it. And there is data to show that when women of color uh, complain about bleeding issues related to their periods um, because of historical um, racism, basically, where women of color are seen as being more impervious to pain and suffering in silence and being stronger, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there sometimes is a tendency on the part of healthcare providers to discount or minimize your symptoms of you know, related to your reproductive tract when you're a woman of color. So you really have to advocate for yourself if you have perimenopausal bleeding, or if you are not perimenopausal, 
but um, you just have an irregular period, it's very heavy, or you have bleeding in between your periods. These are all things that you need to bring to the attention of your healthcare provider and ask them to consider, could I have endometrial cancer? Is it possible? Other ways that this cancer is found are in women who've stopped having their periods they, and, and their pap smear shows cancer cells um, from the endometrium. So this can be, this is not a common thing, but when you've stopped getting your periods, they shouldn't see any cells from your lining of your uterus on your pap. So if they do, it's something that your doctor needs to investigate. Another very common way now that endometrial cancer is being found, many, many OBGYNs in their offices are doing uh, pelvic ultrasounds to look at the uterus and the ovaries. And in a postmenopausal woman, if the lining of the uterus is very thick, more than three millimeters, and she's having bleeding, then she needs to have a biopsy because this could be endometrial cancer. And then another group that I think it's important, if a woman is still having her periods and she's over 55, she really needs to have endometrial cancer ruled out as the cause of her still having her periods. Next slide, please. So the important information is that we now are in a changing time with endometrial cancer. It is much more common than it was just 10 years ago. In fact, we have an epidemic of endometrial cancer in the United States. Over the last 10 years, there's been a 57% increase in the number of cases of endometrial cancer. And you can see from this slide in the same time period, the number of cancer cases for ovary cancer has not changed. Next slide, please. Um, the other thing that tells us that we're in an epidemic of endometrial cancer is that unfortunately, because of the sheer number, larger number of cases, more women are passing from endometrial cancer than ever before. And in fact, in 2012, uh, dying from endometrial cancer was the number eight leading cause of cancer death in women. And four short years later, it had moved up to the number six cause of cancer death in women. And in fact, um, I believe um, when updated data comes out, we're going to see that endometrial cancer is going to surpass ovarian cancer as a leading cause of death uh, from, from cancer in women. And I think that's a good thing for ovarian cancer because it means we're curing more women. And the reason it's um, becoming a more common cause of death um, for endometrial cancer is because the number of cases is literally skyrocketing. Next slide, please. Now, the reason for that is very um, complicated, but it basically boils down to that one of the major causes of endometrial cancer is um, a overexpression or overreaction of the endometrial lining to growth signals, primarily from estrogen. And we believe when we look at the patterns of um, uh, body habitus or weight, um, lack of exercise, and very importantly, um, taking in hormones, particularly estrogen in our food, in our water over many, many years probably does account for this epidemic. Now, here's what we really want to talk about tonight, which is endometrial cancer in women of color and Black women. And this is a very important slide, which shows that over the last three decades, Black women have a 20% lower five-year survival from endometrial cancer than white women. And this has not changed, despite the fact that we have many, many more advanced treatments, earlier diagnosis better ways of curing women um, with endometrial cancer. Next slide, please. Um, so when we look at what are the reasons for this disparity in survival, we have to look at health equity. And there's a difference between equality and equity. Equity means that um, everyone has really the same ability to reach that apple of a great cancer outcome of surviving their endometrial cancer. And the reason they have the same chance is that no matter what the challenge to them surviving their endometrial cancer, their health system, their doctor is giving them the tools they need. Equality just means that 
the chance of survival is the same for everyone. But if one person is shorter than the other, for example, or if a woman lives too far away from a center that does the type of surgery or clinical trial she needs, that you know, you need to provide that to her so that she can survive and thrive from her endometrial cancer diagnosis. Next slide, please. So here are some of the challenges to getting health equity in cancer. And I've highlighted the ones that we can do something about. And the ones that we can do something about are um, the biology of the tumor, the lack of trust on the part of the population um, who is getting the cancer, and importantly, access to screening and access to the proper treatment and follow-up. Next slide, please. So some of the things that we've done at Memorial Sloan Kettering in our program are to use clinical trials as a way to achieve health equity for patients of color who are suffering from cancer disparities, specifically endometrial cancer. Next slide, please. So we have done a great effort in terms of community awareness, education, outreach, and engagement, specifically around clinical trials, explaining to patients that clinical trials in cancer are the main way that advances are made, and that one of the best ways to make sure that you get incredible care and the best care is to participate in a clinical trial. Next slide, please. So for endometrial cancer, clinical trials now are very important because of the availability of new drugs to harness your immune system to fight cancer. So regular chemotherapy drugs kill cancer cells and kill normal cells in general, and they're not very specific in how they do the killing. But immunotherapy uses your own body's immune system, specifically your T cells, and gets them activated or deactivated to attack cancer specifically. Next slide, please. This is a slide of um, a combination of an immunotherapy and a targeted therapy that was pioneered in the study run by uh, Dr. Vicki Macker, who is a um, scientist and physician of color here at Memorial Sloan Kettering. And she led a national study that showed that this combination of an immunotherapy and a targeted therapy was really profoundly effective in women with recurrent endometrial cancer who had been treated with regular chemotherapy and multiple times. And the fact that all of those bars are headed downward shows that um, that basically represents how much the cancers shrank or disappeared. So this was a game-changing study. And now this combination of treatments, immunotherapy and the specific targeted therapy has been approved by the FDA for women with endometrial cancer. Next slide, please. Um, so when we, when we look at why we think that we do so well in terms of outcomes for endometrial cancer and other cancers at Sloan Kettering, we believe that it's because participation in trials like the one I showed you really makes a difference. And at Sloan Kettering, we're very fortunate. We've worked very hard so that Going on clinical trials is relatively easy for the patients. We have a very robust education outreach program. And uh, we're very proud to say that about one out of every third of our patients participates in a clinical trial and that there's no difference based on patient's race, ethnicity, or ability to pay. Next slide, please. So another program that we have is to help address this disparity in endometrial cancer is the Endometrial Cancer Equity Program. Next slide, please. So this is an initiative um, where we partner with local community OBGYNs and women themselves to help them, to educate them and help them be better aware of what are the signs and symptoms and screening and diagnostic tests that need to be done to diagnose endometrial cancer and very importantly, make them aware of this disparity in endometrial cancer, of the fact that black women are more likely to die from endometrial cancer than other groups and that we need to understand the reason why. So in this program, we um, work with women who are either been diagnosed or at high risk for endometrial cancer to help make the diagnosis or more importantly, exclude the diagnosis as a cause of their symptoms and to give them this education. We also work with women in terms of understanding their family history and if they've been diagnosed with endometrial cancer, performing um, a unique type of study, a test which looks at the DNA of their tumor and their own DNA that helps us identify whether they're gonna be a candidate 
for that type of targeted immunotherapy I showed you a minute ago. Next slide, please. So this is what we feel is the result of our efforts is that if you remember the slide that shows that black women with endometrial cancer are almost 25% less likely to survive than white women, at Sloan Kettering, there is no difference in survival for black women. They are just as likely to be cured from their endometrial cancer as women from any other group. Next slide, please. So what are the things that I want to leave you with, the things you need to know about endometrial cancer in women of color? First of all, endometrial cancer is the fastest growing cancer in women. It's the incidence, it's increasing by one to 2% per year, and it's happening in women under 50, premenopausal women, very important. Black women have a significantly lower chance of surviving than other groups. We believe that differences in the tumor biology, and I didn't really have a chance to go into this, may explain these black-white cancer disparities, but that's why it is so important for black women to participate in clinical trials. All women with endometrial cancer, including black women, should be screened. They should be screened to see if they have any, um, if their cancer should be screened and tested to see if it has um, a vulnerability in the way the cancer grows that can make it susceptible to treatment and being eradicated by the immunotherapy that I showed you earlier. All women who have endometrial cancer should be screened for an inherited condition called Lynch syndrome, which puts them at greater risk of getting endometrial cancer, of getting bladder cancer um, and breast cancer and ovarian cancer. And um, this genomic analysis, both on the woman herself and on her cancer, is really critical in terms of identifying the appropriate ways to screen and prevent endometrial cancer, as well as immunotherapy for advanced disease. So uh, I think that's all of my slides. Um, oh, this is important slide. Just to let you know, um, these are the phone numbers. And if you're interested in um, being seen as part of the Endometrial Cancer Equity Program, you can call 646-497-9873. Thank you very much.